Hello, everyone. Hello, uh, and uh, good afternoon, because it's very early afternoon after 12. Uh, hello, Dimitris. Hello, Magnus. Hello. I have this um, great opportunity to be in Farad, and we are having our traditional Salon uh, Insula 42, which is an online discussion about cinema. This year, um, the um, documentary series that uh, um, Dimitris Kerkinos is uh, curating uh, has a, as a theme investigation. And Magnus Gerten, who's the second time together with us in Farad, uh, is um, also presenting a film, an alien Nadine, a very, very, very strong, intense, and uh, troublesome story, a love story. A sad love story and at the same time investigative love story, but a peculiar kind of investigative. And um, I'm going to start immediately to ask you questions because uh, we just come back from the uh, laboratory session because Farad has also a lab for young documentarists. And my question is not going to be uh, at the beginning about the, the festival, um, but about the laboratory, um, Magnus and Dimitris. Uh, Hearing the fact that, uh, I mean, feeling, hearing the way in which we gave feedback to these young uh, filmmakers, I was asking myself that how, how do you think and out of your experience, Magnus as a film director and Dimitris as a curator, what do you think is the most useful for a young documentarist to hear during a feedback? How do you see um, this kind of experience for a young documentary filmmaker. I'll start maybe with Magnus Dimitris, if you agree. Absolutely. No, I think it's yeah, a very course. important process that you are, uh, you need to be open up to feedback. I think that's so important. Uh, and that's what, what, what I do in every film. I, I do and uh, as a team, we do a lot of, of uh, feedback sessions. And it's sometimes we do it in a quite early stage. And that is what, what these, uh, uh, the lab participants are doing uh, today as well. And it could be quite painful because you already know that you will get uh, a lot of views. You might even get criticism, uh, but it's so important to, to um, to do it because you cannot protect your film like a, like a newborn baby and hold it close to you and no one want, you don't want anyone to touch it. You have to open up. And I think the, the, the participants are doing that in a very good way because it's, it's quite tough. Um, and, I, I, and they will get views that are, are quite contradictory. Uh, contrict and, and they have to sort it out. They have to pick out the best of what they get and what, what reflects their idea about the film. And they just have to be super open to, to pick out the best of, of the, what we are saying and uh, the other people are saying. But my main point is this process is so necessary. And Magnus, do you think that it's different from giving feedback to a fictional film or a documentary? Do you think it's more important for a documentary than a fiction film? Do you think it's different? It's a different kind of feedback? I, I think it could be because fiction, you usually have like a very clear uh, script or you have like a very clear vision for, it, for your film. Uh, when it comes to documentary, sometimes you, you're actually trying to write the script about your, what, what is your film going to be. And that is what, what the editing is about, that you are actually writing a script. And so it's very much about what is your focus, what is your um, main vision for your film, because you are so much in a searching process when you are, you are working with a documentary. So I think that, that's quite a big difference. And I think it's, probably you, you need it more in documentaries. You need to talk to people, but there's always a, a risk of being, you know, coached, coached too much. Uh, all the coaching will kill, kill you uh, in a way because you get so many views from so many people. 
So you 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 can't do too many times, and you need so, to find out who is the person I want to listen to most. You need to find your your favorite, and then <laughs> go with, go with that person. Basically, what you're saying is that one that gets the feedback has to be both open and closed in a certain way, because you have to be open to everything at the same time to focus yourself on whatever you consider it's useful for your own uh, for your own needs. Exactly. That that's how we do it. And, and when we do uh, with with my films, when we do our, our feedback sessions, we invite the people. We invite. Uh, uh, it could be like people who have never seen anything. It could be our colleagues. It could be uh, narrative consultants and so on. So we try to create a mix. And we, at some point, we know what they will say. They, they, they will only look for uh, the flaws. They, they will not be too positive with things. And um, so you, you just have, and um, but you, also, when you come into a session, you are already in the process of thinking about some problems that you have with your film. So that's what you're searching for. You're listening to people that are addressing those issues that you, you have and you already know that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what you will listen for. Mm -hmm. Dimitris, uh, what, uh, what, um, uh... Uh, what was said uh, today, and um, also what Martin says, makes me wonder, beyond the question I already asked, if you think that a curator would give a different kind of feedback than a, a, a director himself. Do you think there is a difference in the way in which a film curator, a film, uh, um, a, a person passionate about film like, like, like you are and very specialized in, in, in curating and selecting film. Is there a difference in the way that you give feedback, for example, for this kind of uh, exercise as compared to a, a um, documentary film director or a film director generally? Well, I think the objective is the same. You know, I mean, you want to see an interesting film. You want to see a film to work. You want to uh, uh, give solutions according to your taste and your opinion. And um, yes, that's what's uh, important, you know. And, and it's a process that it's helpful not only for, uh, you know, the, um, the director, you know, who has the project, but also for, you know, the mentors or the curators or the directors, you know, because you, you're learning things, you know, you get opinions from uh, uh, directors, let's say, how to approach um, a story, you know, uh, approaches that you haven't uh, thought about, you know. So it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's a necessary process, I think. And it's very interesting for a curator as well. Um, and, and no. both of, for both of you, just to, to end this uh, discussion about, about giving feedback for the laboratory, for the Farad lab laboratory, um, if, let, uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, have you, was, was it ever like you saw um, uh, an exercise, a proposal that was uh, really bad? I mean, really bad, that, that doesn't show talent. And uh, how do you react on that? How do you react when you see that someone really thinks he can be a director and um, however, whatever he, I mean, what he shows is just uh, very weak in, in, in quality from all points of view. That's, did it if ever happen to you? And if, if it did, how did you react? How did you react, uh, Dimitris? Well, I mean, uh... You can learn a lot of things, you know, from weak uh, projects, let's say, or from weak ideas, you know, and and sometimes it's, uh, I, I mean, it's easier to give advice or it's easier to, you know, like uh, to see the mistakes and try, you know, to to be helpful, you know, by pinpointing, you know, the, the weaknesses or the, the mistakes or, and I think there's potential in everything. It's just a matter of angle. It's a matter of uh, how manipulate you manipulate, you know, the material. So, uh, you know, as long as, you know, like, uh, you know, the person who has the project, you know, is open, you know, to, to do changes and uh, he wants to listen and he wants to, to do something with it, 
I think you know you can be helpful, you know, and uh, you, you you can make a weak project uh, stronger, you know, by uh, pinpointing, you know, like the potential that it might have, you know. I mean, there are a lot of times, you know, that you have projects that are like, um, uh, you know, about things that have been have been uh, said before or things that we've seen before, and uh, then there is a challenge, you know, to see how you can uh, make it uh, more interesting, you know, and you know so uh you know even in these cases i think that uh you can be helpful you know and you can uh, you can uh, do something with it exactly yes I mean, to the degree that uh you know depending on the project you know because i don't know sometimes you know you can't do much you know but nevertheless you can always better things you know you can always Try. I, yeah. I would say that there's um, it's rarely that I meet people that are lacking talent in that sense, and mm -hmm. especially not in the lab we are in. I mean, this is talented people, uh, people who have been working with 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 film for a while, and 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 I think all the three projects also has quite interesting starting points. And there is a core of something that is very very moving and, and uh, mm -hmm. that really attracts me uh, so it's all about how to tell the story oh. and it's very it's tough to do a documentary film i mean i've been doing like you know 15 films or something and I, i've been in this business for a while and i sometimes i think that my next film because i've been doing uh, quite a few films i think my, my next film that would be an easy one Finally, now I know how to do it. It will be easy, but it's never easy. It's so tough and every film is a new challenge. And you are in the process of doing a film. You are always at some point you are coming to, um, you have your crisis. You, you feel this is not going to be good. This is going to be the end of my career. Uh, People will hate it. You will. You will always come to that point um, in a film. So it's 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 tough. It's and sometimes when we've been doing a film, the, the film I'm having here, uh, it was such a struggle. Uh, but when you suddenly you 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 you're finishing the editing, you you just inhale and you look at the editor and you say, "It's a miracle. It's a miracle. How did we do it?" And so that's what, what the participants in the lab are facing as well. Um, and they, they are, uh, there's, there's a lot of talent there. Uh, but it's, and that's what I'm trying to say. It's so much about choosing. It's about finding your focus. focus. Don't try to get, fill your film with everything. You need to find that specific idea of this is the film. And you need to find the moments. Mm. I need. I need to. That's what I'm looking for. I'm. I'm. We had this discussion about structure uh, and so on. And at some point, you need to work a lot with structure. But to me, it's finding the the defining moments in your film, the little scene where you can see. It's like a miniature of the full film. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. Because if I can find that scene then I know there's a film. But some, if I would just start with a structure, I don't know if I have a film. Uh, I, I, that's what, but it, it's, 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 it's a different process, of course, with, with every film, but I'm especially looking for that, the defining emotional big moment where something is at stake, mm -hmm. because that, was, that, that is uh, something that you need in every film what is at stake well in, in 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 indeed in this in this kind of line of thinking i i have this question dimitris for for you in we were discussing about it um, a lot uh, also during our last uh, editions of farad uh, but of course, it's a question for both of you, but I'll start with Dimitris. Uh, in, in recent years, documentary has become a very important uh, line of, of filmmaking. And why do you think it's, it's that in the last uh, five years, documentary became such an important um, 
uh, domain and much more consumed by spectators and having broader audiences and uh, being interesting and uh, and becoming such a uh, looked for uh, art form. Well, it's a, a very dynamic genre, um, uh, you know. Um, uh, you can find a lot. Um, you know, that's that's. Uh, it, it's very creative. You know, I mean, it's. Um, um, I mean, what. We have reached a point that you can watch a film and not uh, knowing whether it's a documentary or a fiction, you know, uh -huh. and um, and that's very nice, you know. It just breaks, you know, the the limits of the genres and everything. And I think that comes from documentary more than from fiction, you know, or fiction uses, you know, documentary uh, ways or narration in a way, you know. So it's a very creative genre. And um, aesthetically, you know, I mean, it absorbs, you know, I mean, lately we've seen that uh, there's a lot of, uh, um, I mean, um, you know, we see the use of animation, a lot of animation that it's uh, a way of uh, a solution, you know, finding solution through the animation. And, um, we see a lot of like uh, narrative elements, you know, from all over, you know, uh, that are absorbed, you know, in documentary. And at the same time, you know, I mean, we're living times that, um, you know, television is not functioning the way that we're supposed to function. I mean, um, there's a lot of propaganda. Uh, there's a lot of fake news. There's a lot of, I mean, people don't trust, you know, uh, the news and all, you know, the uh, information we're getting. So documentary somehow, you know, uh, does this job, you know, like uh, it shows things, you know, in a more, uh, um, you know, I mean, it digs things, you know, and uh, it presents things, you know, in 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 a more, um, uh, let's say, objective. I mean, objective. I don't know if it's the right word, but uh, uh, it shows things that you know, and it touches up on themes, you know, that you won't see elsewhere. And people have this need to be informed about what's happening in a different way and get deeper into, you know, this kind of, uh, of subjects, you know, like, uh, you know, things that have to do with politics, with uh, environment, with, uh, with everything that is happening in, in, uh, in, um, uh, in our lives. And uh, documentary is not, it's not anymore like it used to be like, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago about animals or about, uh, you know, just portraits of uh, artists or, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, a very wide, you know, genre, you know, it, it can include everything and can touch up on this, you know, in a very um, creative and uh, essential way. And I think people need that, you know, I think, uh, you know, it, it works in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, for, for uh, the good of the people, you know. And, 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 and you as a programmer, uh, uh, Dimitris, how, how do you, what, what becomes for you now challenging? Because you did programming for a long time and uh, programming documentaries, selecting them. What is today the most challenging thing that happens to you as a programmer? Uh, as compared to years ago in terms of programming, how you program, how you select? Is, is there a change? Do you feel it that something changed in the way you, you, you program? Do you feel that other challenges are ahead uh, re in relation to this? Well, you have a greater production in terms of numbers, of quantity. So uh, you watch more stuff. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, that's very good that, you know, there is, uh, there is a uh, greater quantity, but at the same time, you know, it becomes more difficult, you know, to be able to choose, you know, and to um, find, you know, um, works that are more significant or more creative or, and um, so, I mean, you watch more, that's, that's a, a major change. Okay. And, um, 
you have more demands, you know, you're more demanding because, uh, you know, there is like a, a development and uh, uh, this growth and you've seen more stuff and uh, there are more issues and, you know, you are just, you know, trying to, uh, to find, you know, the, the, you know, the, the best examples of, uh, uh, of a theme or of an approach or uh, whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I don't know, it's, um, uh, it's more demanding, I would say, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's more demanding. Mm -hmm. And Magnus, what do you think about this importance of documentary in uh, terms of uh, the changes that happened in the last uh, 10 years? and uh, this kind of spread of interest for documentary, as well as what are the challenging, uh, um, let's say, aspects of making a documentary today? Mm -hmm. uh, well, first, I would like to say that documentary is so many, many things. It's like uh -huh. saying book. You don't, you have to know what, what kind of book it is. Uh, and I think that's very interesting that we have this variety of different kinds of documentaries. And we still have those uh, animal uh, documentaries that, that Demetrius is talking about. But, and, and we also have, of course, the journalistic tradition of making uh, documentaries in a specific way. Quite often, the more, the more political uh, documentaries. I'm more into to, um, uh, the kind of documentaries that are very inspired by fiction storytelling. And I mean, that is the the classic way of telling a story where you, uh, you, you really need to answer some of those classical narrative questions, uh, which is uh, what is the dilemma, the, the, dilemma, the drama, the, the, what's at stake in the film and so on. Um, so so to me, uh, a good documentary is something very different from what you see on social media, what you see uh, uh, in the more simple documentaries. It's because what we're trying to do as uh, also as Demetrius is saying, we're, we're trying to go deep into things. We are looking for the nuances. We are looking for the contradictions in life. What, when you meet a person, it, we, we realize that he, could, he or she could say something in the beginning of the film. And then suddenly after half an hour in the film, he will, or she will completely contradict him or herself. I mean, that's how we are as human beings. And that is so interesting. And we also work with a timeline. And because when you do a reportage, it's just a, a, a story about the present. This is how things are right now. But we are working with a time scale, which means that we have a starting point and then we have the midpoint and then we have the ending point. Things are changing. I mean, you would see this, this happy guy with long hair. Uh, he's, uh, he's in love with a beautiful woman or whatever. But in the, in, the, in the middle of the film, he's cut his hair and he's lonely and he lost his job. And, and then he comes back at the end of the film. We are following a process. And that's so interesting. And we are in a word of sim world of simplified stories because that's what we have now right wing, wing stories, stories. Uh, fake news and so on we are trying to tell stories about how complicated life is how how complicated the the truth of society and politics and so so on are that's that's our message and it's it's quite a complicated message to have that nothing is, is as simple as you think it is. But I think that's our, it's our mission. That's what our contribution to the world that, that you, you need to go deep in order to understand. Right, so, so 
basically uh, what you're saying is that in, in a way this this expansion of documentary uh, what what both of you are saying is that this way of, of expanding the interest for documentary reflects also um, deepening of interest in terms of okay but where the truth really lies because truth is always paradoxical and it's always challenging and it's always um, a matter of uh, interpretation and a matter of personal mirroring the world that is around mm. us now um, I'm, I'm going to go come back to the uh, edition, the ninth edition of Farad, and um, discuss a little bit both about uh, your film, um, uh, Magnus, but, but also about programming. A lot of the journalists who asked me questions about this edition, Dimitris, were asking me, okay, but what is it uh, investigative documentary? What, what does this mean to do uh, um, uh, documentary of investigation. So I would like to ask you, how did you see the alchemy this year in terms of selection? What did you bring in uh, considering its documentary of investigation? Because I find a, a, a lot of complementarity and diversity in the way that you chose the 11 films that finally are presented in Arad and two of them in Timisoara. But uh, of course, ten of them you have chosen really uh, yourself, so it was your uh, your selection and your your proposal. How what what is for you uh, the the documentary of investigation? How what what was the criteria you you chose these films? Well, as you said, you know we you know I wanted to, to have diversity to show the different aspects you know of uh, investigation. And also, you know, the different um, um, themes, you know, investigation, you know, I mean, we have like, uh, you know, f uh, you know, personal stories, social stories, political stories, you know, are seen through an investigation, you know, and um, I think diversity is always important, you know, to, to you know, to, to show, you know, different aspects, you know, of, uh, of one thing, you know. And um, for me, investigation is research. You know, it's, it's, it's something that uh, um, it happens in my daily life, you know, in my work, in everything. You know, you always do research, you always investigate. And it's in a very exciting, you know, like um, thing to do, you know, very interesting, you know. And it's, it's, it's connected to uh, searching for the truth, for searching uh, for understanding, you know, and uh, these are aspects that are very important um, uh, to me and also for the audience to explore through uh, the films. So, uh, you know, investigation in a way, you know, is like, uh, um, is identified with documentary, you know. I mean, when you do a documentary, let's say you investigate something, you know, and you have to find the right way to approach it. So, um, it, you know, it was very exciting, you know, to, to, you know, to watch different kind of films and, and try to put all of them together so that you can offer like, a, um, um, how can I say, like in a kaleidoscopic way, you know, what uh, investigation can mean um, in, uh, in a lot of levels, you know, in a social, personal, political level. And I think that was, you know, like uh, the idea behind the selection of uh, the films this year, you know, trying to have a, um, a bit of everything, you know, and through films that they did it in a very creative and meaningful way. So I think if someone watches the whole program has a very good idea, you know, of, you know, what um, investigative documentary you know, for um, on a personal or a social level. And and you did have, you do have the, the programming this year has this kind of polarity on the line of what you are saying. Um, the polarity between a film like Searching for Sugar Man, uh, a film that makes you feel uh, kind of, okay, everything can happen in life. Everything miraculous can happen in life. Everything can be great and finally, uh, un unbelievable things can uh, can can happen, and then a film like Depth Two, and you were discussing yesterday about Depth Two and the interesting 
modalities from a, from a stylistic point of view and aesthetic point of view that this film that's a very very troubling film and a very um, um, in in a way brutal film because one has to accept to look into a truth that is hard to 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 accept. Uh, what can you what what for example choosing this kind of film like that to what what is for you uh, as a programmer most interesting about this uh, uh, this kind of film? Well, I mean, of course, the theme is very important. I mean, it's a film that uh, it's very brave politically, but at the same time, it's uh, innovative aesthetically. Uh, of course, I mean, maybe you have seen, you know, like uh, uh, similar approaches, but it's it's very stimulating for me as a programmer, you know, uh, to see uh, and to show, you know, the solutions that uh, directors find, you know, to 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 narrate a story, you know. And uh, I think the combination of these two elements, you know, uh, make the film a very, very um, interesting and important. I mean, you know, the bravery, the political bravery, you know. Touching such uh, a difficult subject, and at the same time, this combination of two things, you know. But yeah, because because we have maybe to to, to tell those of, uh, here who are here to look at us uh, for the moment. It's a film about the hidden story during the NATO bombing of of uh, uh, in former Yugoslavia about the hidden uh, uh, common uh, graves and and crimes, war crimes that were hidden. To, to the uh, to the public and are still let's say um, uh, not accepted by uh, by Serbs in in uh, in terms of what happened du during that uh, that period. I mean, it's a very very provocative and very um, very um, troublesome uh, historical moment that is described in the films. And also, I think it's, I believe that in the context of the uh, war in uh, Ukraine, this is a very, very present moment, uh, important, uh, important film, uh, challenging us with the idea that whatever can happen, and then we are all accomplices, a lot, a lot of people can be accomplices in doing terrible things still, even if we believe that we are, we are, um, we are living here in Europe, such a lean and, and uh, correct and ethical, uh, ethical uh, life. I, I mean, this, this, I believe it's, uh, it's, it's important. And how did you discover the film, Dimitris? Well, it's, a, it's an older, older film, you know, and uh, I had seen it uh, in Berlin Alley when it was screened, actually. And, um, you know, I was quite impressed. And, uh, you know, we screened it in, in Thessaloniki, you know, like a, a month later. And it has stayed with me, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, a film that I liked very much, you know, and I thought that uh, now it fits, you know, it gives a, dif a different dimension of investigation. And, and, and from the, your Q and A session that was yesterday, because the film was screened yesterday, and it's a, we have a very nice photo with people staying still with Onyesh, with the director who was here for the Q and A session, and they stayed outside the cinema, still asking him questions. What do you think? It's the most. Uh, um, interesting questions that, for example, was asked today. What what kind of curiosity did the uh, did the film uh, bring up for for the people who who looked at it yesterday? Uh, I don't know if I can answer that question. Actually, uh, well, I think what it's important about this film is that um, it uh, it troubles you and it stays with you and it makes you question yourself. And so somehow it just uh, uh, takes you in the film and it, 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 uh, uh, it makes you consider, you know, like, uh, as you said, you know, like now we have, there's a war in Ukraine, you know, you, you, you can think, 
you know, your position, you know, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm always, when a film touches me, you know, I, I try to put myself in the shoes of the people who are part of uh, the story of Watts and everything. So, um, you know, it creates uh, feelings, you know, troublesome feelings, but nevertheless feelings and emotions, you know, that they make you look inside yourself, you know, and just uh, question what uh, you show and, um, you know, how would you react or what would you do or whatever. So I think it, it it's, you know, it, uh, it, it makes you, you know, uh, work things out, you know, with yourself. Sorry, not now, please. Not now. <laughs> not now, later. Tomorrow. Later on, in half an hour, please. Sorry, uh, just uh, room service. <laughs> the cleaning lady, because we are all in the same hotel, where <laughs> this we can see from the decoration behind yes. us. So, I don't know, that, that's how it, uh, it worked on me, you know. I mean, documentary has, you know, the ability uh, to create in you ethical questions, you know, maybe you have nothing to do with that. Uh, you know, you're seeing something that is happening somewhere else that it's not your reality or anything, but somehow it obliges you, you know, to, to take a position as well, you know, and to just, mm -hmm. you know, ask yourself and, <laughs> um, you know, question yourself and just uh, take a stand. And mm -hmm. that's important, I think. Yes, it's, and, and, it's not like fiction that maybe it's a story and that, you know, it touches you or anything. You know, here you have like a, a facts that, you know, you have to, to take a stand. Yeah, and it, it, it is this kind of film that, that makes you remember all the time uh, that one has to to, to accept that this kind of thing is possible, is still possible. And whatever we would like to think, um, we, we, we have always to keep this in mind. And as you say, Dimitris, take a stand. I mean, be very at attentive in, in, um, in the immediate reality that we are in, uh, that, uh, that uh, things uh, you, one has to take also individually a stand toward any kind of, uh, of horror uh, story and an un unacceptable thing that uh, that happens because we as human beings allowing we are allowing uh, sometimes institutions and and uh, outside outside forces to decide for uh, for us and and probably that we have to question this and indeed uh, this documentary like other documentaries are putting us in are, are, are obliging us to face uh, the reality of our individual responsibility toward crimes and and uh, uh, awful and unacceptable things that happen. Now, Magnus, you are also speaking, and your your story, the story that you're telling, is uh, uh, also a story happening in a um, in a very troublesome uh, context. And I'm I'm very I'm very interested. How did you decide to do this documentary, Nelly and Nadine? I mean, what was the spark? that created your motivation to do, uh, to do this film? It all started with that I found uh, an old newsreel from 1945. And uh, th this newsreel shows uh, survivors coming from the concentration camps. And they actually arrive in my hometown in Malmö, Sweden. And that's mm -hmm. why I was watching this newsreel. And what you see is, is mainly women they are taking their first steps in freedom mm. and you can see it's like they, they are meeting a camera and they are are in a shock over that, that they actually are free and i never intended to do anything about the second world war or anything that was close to the holocaust at, at all. all it felt like those stories have has have, have already been told in a way to me at least I, I was not sure about if I had any contribution to do. But then I became so fascinated in this film reel and the faces of this extremely well shot news reel. Uh, because it's like sometimes people ask me if it's it's like a reenactment or so. Yeah. It's, it's it looks so, so good. good. 
so I decided to do start a journey into the 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 secrets of this film reel, trying to investigate the film reel. Uh, and I was asking the, in a way, impossible question: Is it is it possible to find out seventy five years later who are these people? What what, what what are their names? What are their stories? Um, and I think you, as a documentary filmmaker, you you need a challenge that feels almost impossible. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good starting point. Otherwise, you get too lazy. You 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 don't you don't get the the, the right motivation for things. So that is the journey that I started many years ago. I saw this film reel in two thousand and seven, and one of the faces that I actually saw and was so fascinated by in 2007 was the face of one of the two main characters, main characters. in, in, in my, my new film, and that is Nadine. Mm -hmm. the film is Nelly and Nadine. And Nadine is standing there in this film reel and is, she's having this, this expression in her face and you don't really know if she's happy about being liberated or you, I would, I've been thinking for so many years, what is inside her head in this moment. So that is the starting point of my film. And then I realized after working with uh, finding out who people are in the film reel and, and actually doing films before, we, I've been working with two other films that they, they, and they are also based on the same, same archive footage. Mm -hmm. And so finally, after many years, I, 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 I stumbled on, on the, 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 the full story of Nadine and the woman she met in the camp. And that is a story that is about now as well, because if you, it's about the present. Because if you do a film about something that happened many years ago, it still has to be a film about the present. So that's why the film also starts with a woman walking around in a kitchen in, in a farm in France. And she's in the moment of confronting family secrets and trying to find out who her grandmother was and uh, who was that woman that the grandmother lived together with. Oh. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the, 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 the starting point of the, of the journey that, that I hopefully people will get so interested in so they will follow the film and finally they will they will meet this big big love story but if you if if it were to 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 tell in a nutshell what the what the film is about for you uh, magnus what is the film about is it about love is it about the healing power of love is it about um, um unbelievable things happening? Is it about the Holocaust? What, what is this film about? Uh, I would say it's not about the Holocaust. Uh, that's, okay. the, that's the backdrop. The Second World War is the, the backdrop. And, and when you do your films, you, they, they tend to be in, in, in very different settings. I, last time I was here, I had a film about a, a famous football player, Slatan yeah. Ibrahimovic. Yeah. So the setting of that film was like football arenas. Mm. And the setting of this film is, um, uh, is maybe the war and, and the Holocaust in a way. That's the backdrop at least. But I, every film should be uh, existential. It should be existential. It should be about the big questions in life, uh, who we are and, and how it is to live a life and how we deal with traumas and how we, we, we find our way forward in this life. So to me, that, that's the core of the film. It's those questions. And I would say it's a film about love, of course. It's, it's a film about the, 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 the mighty power of love. And love is a power that can make you survive even the worst circumstances. And, and, and you, Dimitris, how do you see uh, Magnus' film? Well, how did you, what, your, what was your reaction to, uh, to this film? Well, <clears throat> I saw it as a very nice uh, love story. 
you know, and uh, quite powerful because, you know, the, you know, the circumstances, you know, at that time, it was, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was like a, a very, very uh, touching, you know, like a, a relationship, I would say. And uh, characters, you know, were also interesting. You know, you had, uh, I had an interest for the characters, you know, and um, yeah, yeah, it was like, um, it was a, a very nice film to, to watch and to follow, you know, it, 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 it keeps you there, you know, it just, uh, you know, it, it, it makes you want to, to, to understand and to participate in this kind of uh, um, very beautiful and healing uh, way of, 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 uh, of um, understanding the, the, the story, the love story. Now yes, I'm going, because, because our time is running, I'm going to ask you a question about time. Um, Dimitris, when, whenever we started, when we, since we started to work together, I have always um, uh, noticed, I personally uh, noticed because I am um, someone who is uh, rather um, um, a quick fixer. <laughs> Let let me put it like that. I'm 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 quick. I I'm always um, um, uh, rushing, rushing, rushing towards something. I don't know what. Uh, I have noticed that what I like very much in the selection of films. One of the things I like very much in the selection of films that you do is that you uh, you really have this uh, capacity to. To, to take and to select films that are dealing also with a time dimension, taking the time, taking the time to go and, and have, uh, taking the time to look at things, taking the time to feel things, taking the time to, to meditate about what you see. And I would like to, to ask both of you, how do you feel that the dimension of time generally in the arts has modified in the, in the last decade, decades. Because for me, one of the most striking things looking today at older films, but also looking at painting, for example, or, um, or seeing older, um, um, performances that are filmed, I have a very strong feeling that the dimension of time changed. It is as if um, we everything has to be done quicker, more spotty, more uh, more um, kind of out of a sort of a more more out of a hysterical impulse than out of a. Uh, of, uh, of, uh, of 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 letting time uh, beat its own uh, its own rhythm. How how do you see this translated in documentary, but also in film in general? If this if this you feel is something that you think about time. Well, I really haven't uh, thought of this this way, uh, but. Uh, um... I think that um, you know time is important. You have to let uh, things grow in you. Time, you know, I mean, uh, whether in uh, selecting uh, films or um, you know writing like a text or whatever, um, you know, I need time to let it grow, you know, in me, and 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 be sure, you know, that you know I've seen it the way. I have to see it and, 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 and that I haven't uh, uh, done it justice, you know, to what I'm doing, you know. So for that, you need time. And also for uh, documentaries or fiction films, but let's say, let's talk about documentaries. I think, uh, you know, a good film, a good documentary needs time, you know. It's the same procedure. It has to grow. You have to, you know, let it grow and be sure, you know, uh, for what you're doing, what you want to show, and uh, what's the best way to do it. 
I mean, like in Greece, we have a great production of documentaries. And, uh, you know, the problem is that they don't give them time. You know, they want to produce a documentary every year. Mm -hmm. So they find the easy ways, you know, to just approach a thing, you know. And although a lot of times they have a very strong themes, you know, they rely on the strength of the, of the theme and they don't have a perspective. They don't have, uh, you know, uh, an, an originality in, in the angle, in the way they see things, you know. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, a good documentary, you know, takes the time that it needs, you know, to just, you know, do the thing, you know, the, you know, they want to do. So I think it's important, you need time, you know, of course time is relative for, uh, you know, other people do things, you know, faster than others, or they need less time to take decisions or everything, you know, but uh, still, you know, you have to elaborate on things, you know, you have to take your time mm -hmm. to, you know. And, and do you feel, uh, Dimitris, that this kind of time now, people no longer give it, the, not only in Greece, but generally, do you feel that there is a tendency to reduce time and to... Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, everything is done so fast, you know, I mean, like, uh, you have all this information, you know, you're bom bombarded with all this information that, you know, it's so much, you don't have time to go after them. So you just check, you know, the headlines or you check, you know, the first paragraph when you read something or you just scroll, you know, you just, so you don't give time to things, you know, you just pass through things, you know, so things can become more superficial, you know, you just, you don't take your time to, to when you have, you know, it's, I, I, unfortunately, that's, you know, like the era we are living, you know, too, too many information that we cannot process. Yeah. And, 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 and we get tired, you know, we just don't, you know, we just go through them, you know, we just don't go deep in them, you know. So that's our times, I think. And you, Magnus, what do you think about this? Uh, but I, but I, I agree with Demetrius, of course. I mean, if, if you're looking into social media, for instance, if you're, you're publishing a story on Instagram, it's, uh, it should be 15 seconds. But it's even better to do a bumper, which is, is sec six seconds. And when you do the 15 seconds, you'll be sure to put the, the most important information first, because that is how leads are totally and so we we uh we documentary filmmakers we are like the warriors of of, of slow storytelling yeah uh, because I, I that that's what we what we have to be and uh, i hope we can uh, we can um, uh, show people that you need time to to grow into a story and you need time to to live in the pace of the film, that you you uh, that we as the filmmakers can hold your hand and we can walk slowly with you into different rooms and you can meet different people and you will get close to people because when you are meeting a person in real life, you don't talk to them for fifteen seconds and then you're you're happy. You need to grow a friendship. You need time. And that is what, what filmmaking is about as well. We're, we are growing a friendship. We're establishing um, a relationship. It's, it's the, the, the film and it's the audience. And we need time to establish that. Uh, but it's also about, about uh, uh, you know, where do you watch the film? Sometimes you really need to watch it in a cinema. And people usually don't do that these days. And then we have the pressure of the, the, uh, the people who are paying, uh, paying the money for the documentary, the financing of the documentary. That is television, ma mainly it's television. They don't want us to make these slow films, 90 minutes of slow storytelling. They want something quicker and uh, should be like 52 or 58 minutes if you do, do a long documentary. 
and sometimes we think when I'm when, when I'm sitting here editing, we with we are talking about okay, let's do this one a little bit quicker, or more American style, and so on. But it never happens. I I always slowly I I move back to my my kind of storytelling, which is the 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 slow pace and the necessity of time in your film. Great. So I think that this is a very nice um, final touch for our conversation. Our internet, internet connection was not very good, but I uh, do feel that the flow of the discussion was uh, really moving at a human pace. We took our time to discuss about a certain number of things. Thank you so much, Dimitris and Magnus. And for all of you that look at um, online now and are in Arad or in Timisoara, you are invited to come and see today and tomorrow the films of Farad. And I have to say that we keep Farad at this uh, human dimension also because we believe that some festivals are growing friendships also, as you very nicely put it, Magnus. Thank you, Dimitris and, uh, and, um, and Magnus. And uh, well, see you soon for a next Salon Island 42 in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Corina. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.